So, this is all the equations na na-derived natin from equation number 1 hanggang equation number 5. Equation number 1, equation number 2, equation number 3, equation number 4, and finally, the equation number 5. In this video, we will derive equations that describe the motion of particles moving with constant acceleration. So, paano ba natin masasabi ng isang acceleration ay constant? An acceleration is said to be constant if the velocity is changing by a constant or a uniform rate. Kapag yung velocity ay hindi nagbabago, ibig sabihin dire-direct yung motion niya without changing the velocity. Ibig sabihin, the motion has a constant acceleration. These equations of motion can be used to describe a wide range of everyday phenomena. Let's start with the velocity as a function of time. As I have said, kung yung isang particle has a constant acceleration, ibig sabihin, it has the same acceleration at every instant of time. Kada segundo, isa lang yung kanyang acceleration. Recalling the definition of average acceleration, we have this equation. Average acceleration is equal to delta V over delta T, or simply this is final velocity minus initial velocity over final time minus initial time, or A na lang. So yung initial and final times na yan may be chosen arbitrarily in this equation. For example, if we let yung t initial natin a 0 for the initial time and yung initial velocity natin, i-denote natin as v sub 0 or v sub o at the time 0. For the final time and velocity, we drop the yung subscripts to simplify the notation. Thus, yung final time naman natin is i-denote na lang natin as t na lang. And yung final velocity natin, i-denote natin ngayon as simply v na lang. So, with these identifications, we have the average acceleration as v minus v sub o over t minus 0. And this is another equal to a lang. Ito siya. With a slight arrangement, we find yung v minus v sub o natin. Ito. We write natin as v minus v sub o equals the acceleration times, ito, ay cross multiply natin, itong quantity na yan, this is a times the quantity of t minus 0, or simply a t na lang kasi wala na yung 0 na yan. And, dito magsa-start yung pinakaunang equation of motion natin. The constant acceleration of motion, velocity as a function of time, ito siya, Velocity is equal to, final velocity is equal to V sub O plus A T. Ito lang din siya. V minus V sub O equals A T. And then we are speaking here about the velocity. Ito. So, nilipat natin yung V sub O to the right side of the equation magiging positive plus A T. And then, ito na siya. This is the equation 1. Position is a function of time and velocity. In this derivation, Sasagutin natin yung tanong na how far does a particle move in a given time? So, gaano raw kalayo ang mamumove ng isang particle na consider natin in a given time kung yung kanyang acceleration is constant. So, para masagot ito, let's recall the definition of the average velocity. We have the equation for the average velocity and this is equal to delta x over delta t or simply this is final position minus Initial position over the final time minus initial time. Using the same identifications given sa previous na derivation natin kanina, for the initial and final times, yung t final natin is, e denote na lang natin as t, while yung t initial natin is 0 na lang. And then for the initial and final position, yung initial position natin, e denote na lang natin as x sub 0, while yung x final natin is simply x na lang. We have the average velocity equals ang x final natin is x na lang minus x sub o or x sub 0 over t minus 0. Multiplying by t minus 0, to cross multiply natin na yan, we will have x minus x sub o equals average velocity times t minus t sub o or simply dahil wala na yung 0 na yan, this is v average times 
50 na lang. And finally, a simple arrangement results in, again, pinag-usapan naman natin dito is yung position as a function of time and velocity. By final rearrangement, this is now x minus x sub o equals v times v average or average velocity times c or we are solving here for the position x equals x sub o positive na yan plus average velocity times t. So itong equation na to is ma-apply natin to any different calculation sa kinematics natin whether yung acceleration is constant or hindi. But a more useful expression for the case of constant acceleration, pwede nating i-derive by writing yung average velocity natin in terms of the initial and final velocities. Yung average velocity na yun during a period of time is simply the average of the initial and final velocities. That is yung sum of the two velocities and i-divide natin sila sa two. So ito yan, importante rin itong equation na to. And this is the equation number two natin. As I have said, Gagamitin natin itong equation number 2 para ma-derive natin yung more useful expression dito sa equation na to. And substituting this equation number 2 dito sa equation na to, ito yung ma-derive natin na equation. If we substitute this equation here, this is x equals x sub o plus yung v average natin which is v sub o plus v over 2 times t. Ilabas natin yung 1 half. This is x equals x sub o plus 1 half times the quantity of v sub o plus v times t. And ito na nga siya. This is the equation number 3, constant acceleration equation of motion position as a function of time. Position as a function of time and acceleration. So in this equation, we will start with the average velocity equals v o plus v over 2. And first, we use the velocity from equation number 1 natin kanina calculated with this equation, v equals v sub o plus a t. So, in the expression for the average velocity, eto, labas natin yung 1 half, this is average velocity equals 1 half times v o plus v. Symbolically, this gives the results, pag dinistribute natin ito, dito, we will obtain 1 half times V sub O plus, ilalagay natin ito, another V sub O plus AT. So, ito yan. And then, we combine like terms, this is 1 half times V O plus V O is 2 V O plus AT, and then we multiply or we distribute this one half here dito sa dalawang terms natin ito. So, yung average acceleration natin now is equal to cancel ito. This is VO plus one half AT. And next, itong result na to is a substitute natin dun sa equation number 3 natin kanina which is X equals X sub O plus one half times V sub o plus v times t. So, kung mapapansin natin, itong part na to, eto rin siya, and this equation is also equal to this equation in terms of the constant acceleration. So, itong part na to, is papalitan natin ng buo with this derived equation. This will be x equals x sub o plus v sub o plus 1 half a t times t. Again, Etong part na to is etong buo na to na ipinalit natin dito sa average velocity na to. Simplifying this expression, makukuha natin is etong equation and this is the equation number 4. x is equal to x sub o plus v sub o times t plus 1 half a t square. So, paano naging ganun? Yunisibute lang natin itong t dito sa dalawa na to. x is equal to x sub o plus t times v sub o is v sub o t plus 1 half a, dinistribute ito, t square. So, eto na siya. Here, we have an expression for the position versus time that is explicitly in terms of the acceleration A natin. Mapapansin natin na bawat term dito sa equation number 4 na to has the same dimensions as they must, of course. For example, yung, term, yung velocity term natin na V sub O times T, eto, has the units of meter per second times 
second and equivalent nun is meters din. Itong visible na yan, meters per second. And itong time is second. So, makakancel yan. Ang matitira dito is meters. And itong exabo natin is meters din yan. And then, similarly, dun sa acceleration na term natin, itong term na ito, 1 half at square as the units of, yung a natin is meter per second square. And yung t natin ay second square. So, pag kinancel mo yan, meters pa din yung lalabas. So, lahat sila is meters. That's why this is a position as a function of time equation number 4. Plus, we have the velocity as a function of position. This final equation of motion with constant acceleration, i-relate natin yung velocity to position. So, we start by solving for the time using this equation. This is the equation number 1. By rearranging the equation, we have t equals v minus v sub o over a. Next, isa-substitute natin itong result na ito ng time sa equation number 3 natin kanina, yung x equals x sub o plus 1 half times v sub o plus v times t. Substituting this value of time dito sa t na to, we have x equals x sub o plus 1 half times v sub o plus v. And ang new value ng t natin is v minus v sub o over a. To simplify the derivation, ilabas na natin itong denominator na a. So we have x equals x sub o plus 1 half. Ilabas na natin yung a. So this is 1 over 2a na times v sub o plus v times v minus v sub o. Now, i-check muna natin itong part na to. Ilagay natin yung v sa kabila. So, this is v plus v sub o times v minus v sub o. And then, kapag pinag-multiply natin itong dalawa na to, this is v times v, v square, and v sub o times v sub o, this is negative v sub o square, and this is v o times v, ito, this is v times v sub o, and ito rin, same, kaya lang negative ito, negative v times v sub o. So, cancel na to, we will have v square minus v sub o square. Ito na yung value na ilalagay natin dito sa part na to. This is now, x equals x sub o plus 1 over 2a times v square minus v sub o square. Finally, a straightforward derivation, ito yung makukuha natin na final equation and this is equation number 5. In terms of the velocity tayo kasi, veloc this is velocity as a function of position. So, dinerive natin, nilipat muna natin itong x sub o, this is x minus x sub o, at tira dito is 1 over 2a times v square minus v sub o square and then kin cross multiply natin, nilipat natin yung 2a sa left side of the equation by cross multiplication and Mangyayari dito is 2a times x minus x sub o equals v square minus v sub o square. And then, nilipat natin itong v sub o square negative dito sa kabila. Naging positive na siya. So, this is now v square. Ito. Ito yan. Pinagbaliktad ko lang. Plus v sub o square plus 2a times x minus x sub o. And ito na yung ating equation number so, this equation allows us to relate the velocity at one position to the velocity at another position without knowing how much time is involved. Hindi na natin kailangang alamin pa yung time or for example, when we are calculating motion at constant acceleration problems, kung walang given na time at meron tayong given na initial and final position as well as the initial velocity, pwede natin masolve yung final velocity. So, this is all the equations na derived natin from equation number 1 hanggang equation number 5. Equation number 1, equation number 2, equation number 3, equation number 4, and finally the equation number 5 na pwede natin magamit to all the problems regarding the motions at constant acceleration.